We are live now. That's wonderful. <clears throat> okay, perfect. I think we can start now. We can. Idris, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Um, thank you so much. To introduce Idris. Uh, Idris is, is a very good friend of mine, and also he's uh, working as a, um, as a, as a uh, import and export trainer um, for a couple of uh, international bodies uh, from, from Pakistan. Uh, one is made a small and medium enterprises uh, development authority, NBDP as well, uh, where he's a national business development program analyzer. Uh, he's here now uh, with me live to discuss um, some options between uh, UK and Pakistan, how we can do trade and what's the best way forward. So I'm just having some difficulty with the reception here. Um, so I'm just trying to clear that, see if that can work. Idris, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Idris, thank you for coming board. Uh, thank you so uh, much. If you, just, uh, if you just kindly just do a small introduction of yourself so that uh, our viewers uh, can have some understanding of your background. Okay, me, Muhammad Idris Asghar. I'm basically a approved consultant and trainer of uh, Ministry of Industries and Production here in Pakistan. Uh, my affiliation is with Pakistan Institute of Management, PIM, uh, the most pre prestigious and uh, old management institute here in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on almost around 600, uh, more than 600 topics uh, in providing training and consultancy uh, here yep. in Pakistan. My core areas are supply chain management, import export, international trade and procurement. Okay. Uh, I'm also affiliated with the uh, Small Medium Enterprise Development Authority, Samita, and uh, I am trying to enable our entrepreneurs here to do international trade, import, and export. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. And um, just uh, one of the first questions I'd like to put to you is, what's the impact of COVID-19 in Pakistan at the moment? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, we are almost uh, facing the same difficulties as, as other uh, developing nations are in the world. Uh, yeah. The very first impact was on, on our supplies from China as uh, when pandemic started in, uh, Feb, in, in, in November uh, 2019, uh, okay. we, we, we uh, shut down our ports and the supplies, uh, almost our 60% supplies are from China. So uh, for that reason, we have, uh, we have faced very difficult uh, situations in our production and uh, manufacturing sites and manufacturing lines. And due to that, uh, ultimately our exports also suffered a lot. Uh, in our budget in 2000 and, uh, 2021 budget, uh, we estimated that this situation will uh, get better in the start of October, but uh, unfortunately uh, that has not uh, went uh, according to the plan. And we are still facing the same same problems here in Pakistan, but uh, in the last two in the in the last quarter, uh, our exports almost uh, uh, getting their previous position as in the last financial year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 one thing I want to add here in uh, Pakistan has renewed its uh, free trade agreement with China, and the purpose was to give duty free access to Chinese market uh, here uh, for the Pakistani suppliers. And for many textile and apparel uh, categories were included in the China uh, Pakistan China Free Trade Agreement. Uh, that right. includes cotton, yarn, woven, and knitted garments and home textiles. Okay. Chinese imports um, uh, in these categories, yeah. and their total volume is around 10.20 uh, billion US dollars, while Pakistan's share is only 892 million dollars. So we have a huge, huge gap to be kept to capture uh, in the China. Uh, okay. Same categories are uh, being uh, uh, handled by Vietnam and India, where Vietnam's total export to China is three billion US dollar, and India India's uh, total export is 1.5 billion US dollar to China. Okay. So uh, uh, this uh, FTA was uh, basically a mechanism. Uh, this was done to uh, cover this gap, but unfortunately, we cannot uh, get that that advantage 
uh, as we planned it, uh, but uh, it is very hard and uh, surprising, and it's extremely yeah. difficult to beat China at the at this uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, beat uh, Vietnam and India at this trade game. So yeah. uh, due to this pandemic condition, we are still facing the same problems, and uh, policymakers are working on it to devise such policies that can support uh, exporters to regain and uh, even boost their exports to China. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Um, just, a, just a quick um, a introduction from our side in the UK. Uh, so we've just um, discussing uh, some topics in terms of possible or potential investments uh, between uh, Pakistan and the UK. Now, just a quick question. Another quick question for uh, for Idris is, uh, in your in your opinion, what's the support from the Pakistani government uh, for foreign investments coming into Pakistan in terms of trade, in terms of investment, uh, in terms of ed education, health? So, what sort of support is there from, in your opinion, that the Pakistani government has offered to foreign investors? Okay. Uh, basically, Pakistan seeks greater foreign direct investment in order to uh, boost its economic growth, uh, particularly in the energy, agriculture, information, uh, and uh, communication technology and industrial sectors. So since yeah, 1997, sure. Pakistan has established and maintained a largely open investment regime. So Pakistan introduced an investment policy in 2013 uh, that further liberalized investment policies in uh, most sectors of uh, Pakistan to attract foreign investment and signed an economic cooperation agreement with the China, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC in, in April 2015. And the phase one, which uh, was uh, completed in the late 2019, focused primarily on the infrastructure and energy production. Foreign investors, um, either from China or UK, they continue to advocate for Pakistan to improve legal protection for foreign investments uh, in order to protect intellectual property rights and establish clear and consistent policies for upholding contractual ob obligations and settlement of uh, definitely tax uh, disputes. Uh, so incentive introduced through 2015 and 18 uh, strategic trade policy framework, which is also known as STPF and export enhan en enhancement package EEP uh, remain in place. These incentives are largely uh, industry specific and uh, okay. they include the tax breaks uh, tax refunds, tariff reductions, uh, reduction of uh, non-tariff measures, uh, the provision of dedica dedicated infrastructure and uh, investor facilitation services. So these are some of the policies that are contributing towards uh, better uh, uh, attractive uh, uh, foreign direct investments. The new yeah. STPF uh, uh, reportedly envis envisages uh, incentivizing 26 non-traditional sectors. Uh, which is a okay. huge breakthrough in order to boost uh, exports and to plan improve uh, uh, tax refund processes. So right. foreign private investment promotion and protection act, which was uh, introduced in 1976 and the Fed, uh, and the furtherance and protection of uh, economic act 1992 provide legal protection. So this is also yeah. another contribution towards uh, um, uh, attracting and towards uh, saving the foreign direct investment investment in Pakistan. The yeah. foreign private investment promotion and uh, this this act basically stipulates the foreign investments so will not uh, will not be subject to higher income taxes uh, than sure. similar investments made by the Pakistan Pakistani citizens. Mm -hmm. So all sectors and activities are open for foreign investments unless until unless uh, specifically prohibited or restricted for reasons of uh, national security and public safety. So mm -hmm. board of investment working under prime <clears throat> minister uh, uh, is also responsible for the promotion of investments facilitating sure. local as well as uh, foreign investments uh, investors yeah. um, and enhancing Pakistan's international competitiveness. Is there a, is there a clear path uh, towards these incentives for foreign investors to go into? Is there a clear path, clear guidelines that someone can go online and check? Is there any 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 kind of a, uh, a, a social on social media or even a website where the foreign investment like us in the UK or US or Canada can go and check uh, what incentives are available to them uh, in order to yeah. trade? Um, simply saying uh, you can follow Board of Investments website, BOI. Uh, let right. me share you the exact link. Um, Thank you. Uh, which is... Um, Yeah, it's uh, invest.gov.pk. I'm repeating right. invest.gov.pk. It is, it is the main site of a board, board of investment 
where you can mm -hmm. go and uh, check all the legal formalities, all the uh, policies and procedures uh, if you are interested into uh, investing in Pakistan. Okay, um, just I've just had a, a question come in on my mobile. Um, what uh, what key sectors of Pakistan industry do you see are under distress due to COVID? Okay, so uh, uh, let me share you some of uh, the key key sectors which are majorly disturbed by the COVID nineteen. Um, yeah. As I earlier said, the raw material our basic raw materials are coming from China and India. And um, China was uh, the main, main, main country where uh, the, this pandemic uh, uh, initiated or spread it. Uh, so raw okay. material supplies from China and other similar countries immediately stopped. And due to which higher prices of uh, incoming supplies made our manufacturing cost uh, higher. And yeah. uh, the main sectors that uh, disturbed uh, most from, from this pandemic is the textile sector, which constitute almost 60% of Pakistan's total exports. Uh, depended upon the China, which is also uh, almost 70% of the total input requirements. So the mm -hmm. cost of importing from China surged by up to 100%. Um, yeah. And the other, other, other indirect re uh, and the other sectors uh, uh, affected by this COVID is uh, unemployment uh, increased in the poverty, prices increased, uh, taxation uh, are, st are still higher. Um, uh, let me share uh, FDR, just a moment. Uh, let me share, share you the exact figures. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, FBR said uh, rupees 4.963 uh, 4, 4 trillion uh, rupees uh, in order to be recovered uh, uh, against the taxations. And uh, this, 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 uh, this target is very high. And it, ha it has yeah. created poverty and unemployment uh, due to its uh, uh, indirect uh, effects. So, okay. uh, so these are some of the major sectors. Our production side, uh, our, our SMEs, small medium enterprise development authority, uh, Joe, uh, sorry, uh, SME sectors, uh, they are also directly affected by the COVID-19. Uh, our yeah. construction, our information technology and service sector also uh, affected by the, uh, this pandemic. Yeah. So things are getting better, but uh, we are um, uh, unfortunately seeing a second second wave of uh, this pandemic, which can also mm -hmm. affect uh, largely. But uh, government has taken initiative and uh, uh, again implemented some um, SOPs and restrictions uh, in order to uh, in order to control this pandemic uh, here in yeah. Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, Idris, um, just just for the benefit of our viewers, um, uh, it's taken. It's taken myself, I've been in Pakistan since 2014, uh, trying to set up a few businesses. And it's taken me almost six, seven years to get to this level where we are now working uh, with international companies, trying to train their staff on business management. Um, in, your, in your opinion, is there, I mean, it's taken someone like me six, six years to get to this level. Is there any shortcuts or any kind of a quick fix to these processes that actually burden people down and they and, and people frighten away uh, to go to Pakistan, do the investment there, work there. So is there any kind of any short fixes or any uh, quick fixes that you think that can be implemented by the individuals um, just to promote that growth in Pakistan? Okay, uh, let me share you some of the top sectors uh, that are uh, very attractive in terms of uh, uh, investment. Uh, mm -hmm. You can invest in our financial sectors, in our banking sectors. Uh, you can invest in the chemical industry as we are um, uh, manufacturing. Uh, we have a manufacturing industry here in Pakistan. You can invest in the construction business. And um, let me share you some of the major countries that are investing in Pakistan, including China, United Kingdom, South Korea, Japan. Yep. These are the top countries which are uh, trying to invest in Pakistan. Well, and what, what are the reasons uh, uh, these countries are uh, targeting Pakistan? Uh, the, the biggest strength of Pakistan is two, 207 million uh, people here in Pakistan. So th this population is, uh, uh, it, it, it is like a big market. So yeah. um, uh, we have uh, another uh, good thing. Another strength is inexpensive and cheap labor here. Abundant labor, let me say, abundant labor we have in Pakistan. Our GDP growth in 2017 was reported about 5.2 percent, which is which is quite higher uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when we say about Pakistan. Uh, then government's recent FDI attraction policies and lucrative incentives. These are some of the reasons that investors should come in Pakistan 
and uh, there are almost a uh, few threats uh, you may say some are the negative points as well uh, when you are trying to when you are planning to come in pakistan you must have done your homework in order to um, uh, get benefit from your investment uh, the top uh, risks or top weaknesses are security threats and uh, tension at borders uh, you have to deal with the corruption in the government sector as well as in the private sector uh, another thing is high vulnerability to natural disasters like floods or yeah, yeah, sure, uh, yeah. similar things and um, another un- very unfortunate thing that is being noticed is uh, pakistan's ease of doing business index is uh, very low we are almost at 147th position in the world according to the world bank statistics which is right. uh, which is very alarming but things are uh, getting better our samida uh, secp and other institutes uh, uh, other agencies that are liable uh, in in terms of um, uh, improving our world ranking in ease of doing business they are working yep, tremendous yep. Uh, like uh, if i say samida samida is providing 24 by 7 free consultancy to our sme sectors to our investors uh, that is a big achievement uh another thing is uh, almost all uh, all our departments uh, six, more than more than 60 departments are coming on single platform single uh, online platform uh, that is another achievement uh, for pakistan uh, you can see everything online uh, what are, what is yeah. the status of yeah. your registration what is the status of your shipments what is the status of your investment so yeah. these are some of the things that can um, uh, definitely attract yeah. foreign investors in pakistan i have i have seen that that's one of the uh, the worst experiences i had in setting up business in, in pakistan was it took me almost two and a half years to get my business account uh, set up with the, with the bank there so that was one of the one of the laborious works that i had to go through um so mm-hmm. that was really daunting as well um i have seen over the last six six months to a year that they have been a lot of these departments are coming on a single platform to make life exactly. easy so it's a lot more simplified for the foreign investors um i've got to, i've just had a question come through um from somebody uh, what's the um what is the best way um and what's the process to get a business registered to start import and export between uk and and pakistan okay things are very uh, simple if you want to establish your business for the export or import purposes here in pakistan so you have to follow five uh, steps uh, in order yeah. to get registered here in pakistan the first step the first very first step is uh, get yourself registered or get your company registered from securities and exchange commission of pakistan which is sccp and almost yeah. this is a free of cost process and you have to get ntn from a federal board of revenue government of pakistan and after that you must have a commercial office established in pakistan and uh, you may go to a bank uh, and open a bank account uh, in a in a in a bank which, which is dealing in international trade in 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 uh, trade finance and uh, after yeah. getting your business account you may go to again fpr to get sales tax registration this is your third step i mean uh, let me re- repeat it first is sccp registration then ntn national tax number then you have yeah. to get uh, your bank account be open in a in an uh, international bank or international bank Sec- uh, and then you have to get registered for sales tax registration then you go to uh, your uh, trade bodies or chamber of commerce and get yourself registered from Chang- chamber of commerce yeah. and at the very last if you want to export or import you have to get uh, you have to be get registered from um, uh, uh, pakistan customs uh, to get your okay. vbok id so, so these are the steps that uh, may help you get registered or you may say you may get uh, you will get export license uh, here in pakistan and it will yeah. take almost okay. one and a half month uh, to get all these registrations and it okay. cost around uh, 40 to 50000 rupees for and for a sole proprietor or single member company right okay also um um i've just come into my mind really is what is a letter of credit um how is this seen as a secure payment for exporters like ourselves city pack and and crenshaw uh, what's the purpose of that and what's the what's the value of that for foreign investors okay uh, letter of credit uh, is uh, is considered as the most secure and equally risky payment method for both buyer and seller uh, it is basically a bank guarantee or you may say banks undertaking to pay to exporter on behalf of importer upon okay. the request of yeah. importer so um, the main the main uh, win win situation between buyer and seller is to get uh, uh, seller wants to uh, to be uh, paid as early as possible while importer wants to to hold the payment uh, for as long as possible 
So the win-win right. situation is both parties agree on our, on 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 terms and conditions which are equally risky or equally beneficial for both the parties. So letter of credit provide a facility. Uh, right. to both the importers uh, for example importer wants uh, export uh, performance guarantee uh, importer mm -hmm. wants uh, to get the security of the shipment whereas exporter wants to get the security of the payment so letter of credit is a tool it is a payment method that helps both parties to right. get okay. um, a win-win situation yeah All right. Thank you. Um, i've just had a question come through um uh, some, some somebody wants to know what's the um is there a platform where someone can go and check what the potential market uh, is across the border in Pakistan. Is there is there a a, a social media feed or a, mm -hmm. a, a online website where this can be uh, found? Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously there are uh, a number of tools now available online. Uh, you can access them. You can use them to boost your uh, uh, to to in order to identify, tap, yeah. and uh, capture the markets. Um, uh, but I recommend uh, Alibaba. Uh, Amazon, these are the platforms, but hurdles are still there as uh, we don't have PayPal uh, here in Pakistan. So working on Amazon is quite difficult. So uh, you can go to a direct marketing from uh, uh, getting the list of suppliers or list of uh, importers uh, from international tools like uh, World Trade Organization, United Nations and European Union. They have collaborated together and developed a platform which is known as uh, International Trade Center. And they have multiple tools in order to get yourself uh, 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 introduced into the international market. For example, yeah. uh, I usually share uh, uh, international trade map, ITC trade map. Um, uh, this tool is very effective and it is uh, free of cost to be used in um, developing countries like Pakistan. And it is the largest database of uh, companies, of importers, of or suppliers. And uh, this helps you identify your potential market and uh, also help you identify the uh, sources or suppliers for your product or for your raw material. So uh, this tool is very, very useful. It is very handy. It is uh, easy to use. You can access ITC trade map online, create an account and uh, see their tutorials or lectures and uh, start your own, doing your own marketing. Adiris, thank you for that. I've, just, I've got another question for you, which is just away from the import and export trade. I've seen you, I've seen you over the last five or six years grow uh, immensely, uh, mashallah, in your in your in your, in your area and in your domain import and export. What is it for our young young viewers, for um, for for our youngsters? What do you think is a secret, and what's the best way to to grow, just like you have? Uh, within a very short, you know, a short space of time. So, is there any secret? Is there any any advice that you would like to give to our young viewers? What they need to do in order to grow, uh, just just like yourself, uh, as a kind of a a mentor, coach, or as an as an a ideal uh, model to go forward with. Okay, very interesting questions. Uh, usually, people, trainees or students, come in my training sessions and uh, they try. Uh, to get um, success over the night, it it is very lengthy or a difficult process uh, to get yeah. uh, to to get yourself successful. Uh, but there are a few uh, suggestions or advices that I can give for uh, using this platform. Uh, students must uh, go. Um, a student must go to the market uh, to do an extensive research. If you are sitting at your home and watching television and uh, using your Facebook and uh, uh, trying to do export or import or doing trade, it is very difficult. You have to get out yourself yeah. to the market. You have to go to industry. You have to visit markets uh, in order to get data. Um, I would say yeah. if uh, if it is possible, you must start an internship or a job uh, in an organization that is import or export oriented. Um, uh, after 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 investing your time uh, or your skills, you will be uh, enough uh, educated in this field. You can start your own business, but again, uh, I, I would say things are all uh, online available. You can see YouTube yeah. lectures. You can attend different training sessions. Meta platform is also there. Uh, Pakistan Institute of Management is also there to help you learn uh, these skills. But definitely, you have to uh, get yourself attached uh, with some uh, with some industry or with some uh, you may say traders or importers ex exporters. Who are actually yeah, yeah. doing these these things, uh, and this will yeah. uh, help you uh, get yourself uh, equipped with the latest procedures, policies, and knowledge about it. 
Yeah. Obviously, this is also a opportunity for people uh, to come on board with with our training packages that we have uh, going at the moment in Pakistan via the UK network, where we have entrepreneurship we, uh, entrepreneurship um, training sessions. Uh, how to become a successful entrepreneur, uh, business management skills, time change management. So we have all these uh, courses coming online very shortly. Um, do you do you think that a lot of these courses from the UK are beneficial for for the audience in Pakistan? Definitely. Um, I guess we are trying to uh, make contents or outlines, uh, keeping in view the challenges, the opportunities, yeah. the policies and procedures, uh, both applicable here in Pakistan as well as in the UK. Uh, Pakistan's biggest market is Europe. So, yeah. so, so uh, we are facing very, very uh, uh, different or and difficult situations in order to export to UK, and uh, keep um, based on our experience, based on the uh, experience of our consultant and, and trainers, we are developing yeah. contents, we are developing training sessions, activities, uh, keeping in view all these challenges, all these uh, uh, things. So um, uh, these courses will equally benefit beneficial for uh, the audience here in Pakistan as well as in the UK. Yeah. Idris, thank you so much uh, for your time, for all your efforts, and all and for all your all your guidance and advice. Um, I just like to tell tell our viewers that our next session, uh, which I will post uh, on Facebook shortly, uh, will be uh, Idris will be asking me some questions uh, on the UK network and the UK market, how people in Pakistan can invest in the UK. So please do tune in uh, on on our next live session. And sure until, thank you for joining us. And uh, Adris, once again, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to speaking to you and your pearls of wisdom this week. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.